Welcome geometers to the second section of chapter 8. Today we are jumping into properties of parallelograms. This is going to be the basis for the whole rush of the chapter. We're going to learn, going to learn about parallelograms, we're going to learn about more specific type of, types of parallelograms, and we're going to learn about some other quadrilateral shapes. Today's objective is to calculate missing side and angle measures using properties of parallelograms. So as you can imagine, we're probably going to learn some properties of parallelograms, and then we're going to apply them. So first is just a definition. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with opposite sides that are parallel. Okay, remember the quadrilateral is just a four-sided figure. So a parallelogram is a four-sided figure where the opposite sides are parallel. So this is generally how we see a parallelogram. One pair of opposite sides are parallel, and then another pair of opposite sides are parallel. Two important properties. For every single parallelogram, only parallelograms, the opposite sides are congruent, and the opposite angles are congruent. And then we're going to use this to complete example one. Calculate the values of x and y in the figure below. First of all, we know that this is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are parallel. So, opposite sides parallel tells us that this is a parallelogram. Okay, I know that my opposite sides are congruent, so I know that x plus 4 is going to be congruent to 12. This gives me x equals 8. I also know that my opposite angles are going to be congruent, which gives me y equals 65. And that's it. The next example that we're going to do is similar, but involves more algebra. So in this case, it says calculate the values of x and y in the figure below. Use this to calculate the measures of angles A and B. Assume that ABCD is a parallelogram. Okay, so this is a parallelogram, so opposite sides are going to be parallel. Now, we also know that a parallelogram has opposite sides that are congruent. That's not very helpful here, because we don't have any markings on any of the sides. We also know that the opposite angles are going to be congruent. So in this case, I know that angle B is going to be congruent to angle D, and angle A is going to be congruent to angle C. Congruent means that their measures are equal. So I have 6y equals 6x plus 6. And then I also have 10x minus 2 equals 11y subtract 24. Okay, so I have to solve for both x and y. So I'm going to need two equations, which I have. Um, so I'm going to have to solve the system using either substitution or elimination. I notice on my first equation I have 6y, 6x, and 6. Everything is divisible by 6. So I'm going to divide everything by 6. I end up with y equals x plus 1. Okay, because I have y equals, this tells me that I probably want to do substitution. So in my second equation, instead of writing y, I'm going to write x plus 1. So I have 10x minus 2, that stays the same. That equals 11y, but instead of y, I'm now going to write x plus 1 minus 24. And now I'm going to distribute. So I get 10x minus 2 equals 11x plus 11 subtract 24. 10x minus 2 equals 11x. And then 11 subtract 24 is going to be negative 13. I'm going to add 13 to the other side. 13 and negative 2 is negative 11. And then subtract 10, 10, sorry, this should be positive 11. Subtract 10x, and I get x equals 11. Okay, so it says calculate the values of x and y. So that's only x. I still have to do y. I'm going to substitute back into my y equation. So I get y equals 11 add 1, so y equals 12. Finally, it asks us to calculate the measures of angles A and B. So the measure of angle A 
is going to be 10 multiplied by 11, subtract 2. So the measure of angle A is going to be 108 degrees. The measure of angle B is going to be 6 multiplied by 12, which is 72 degrees. Okay, so I know that that one was a little tricky, but it was just supposed to jog our memories a little bit about solving systems. Um, one thing that I wanted you to notice is that the measure of angle A is 108 and the measure of angle B is 72. Now, I know that opposite angles are congruent. So A and C are going to be congruent, B and D are going to be congruent, but what about A and B, the ones that are consecutive? Well, if I look, 108 and 72 is going to give me 180. And this leads to the next property on the next page. In a parallelogram, the consecutive angles are supplementary. So opposite angles are congruent. The ones across from each other are congruent. The ones next to each other are supplementary. They're going to add to B180. Another thing we need to talk about is diagonals. So definition first, a diagonal is a segment connecting non-adjacent vertices. So I know that's kind of a confusing definition, so let's just draw ourselves a random quadrilateral. This would be one diagonal. It connects two vertices, two points, that are not next to each other. This is not a diagonal. It's connecting two vertices, this one and this one, that are next to each other. This would be another diagonal. So this is important because in a parallelogram, the diagonals, sorry, bisect each other. So that leads us to example three. It says the diagonals of parallelogram LMNO intersect at point P. What are the coordinates of P? Well, from the previous property, I know that the diagonals bisect each other. So diagonal N, LN is bisected, so these are congruent. And diagonal OM is also bisected, so these are congruent. What that tells us is that P is the midpoint of both segments, of both diagonals. So what I need to do is I need to find the midpoint of both diagonals. So first let's start with LN. I have point L, which is 1, 4. I have point N, which is 6, 0. So my midpoint then is going to be 1 add 6 over 2 and 4 add 0 over 2. 1 add 6 is 7, so this is going to be 7 over 2. 4 add 0 is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So initially this looks like A is going to be a uh, contains the coordinates of P. Now I could have chosen the other diagonal as well, so let's do, do that one. Let's look at diagonal OM. O is the point 0, 0. M is the point 7, 4. So let's calculate the midpoint. I have 0 add 7 over 2 and 0 add 4 over 2. This becomes 7 over 2 and 4 divided by 2, which is 2. Again, this should not be the surprise. This should not be a surprise. Both of the diagonals bisect each other, so they're going to share the same midpoint. So the answer is A. Okay. So let's move on a little bit. Example 4, it says the measure of one interior angle of a parallelogram is 0.25 times the measure of another angle. Find the measure of each angle. I would like you to pause the video and try this one on your own. We haven't done an example exactly like this yet, but it does involve the property at the top of this page. Pause, try it on your own, and come back when you are finished. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. The first thing that I would have done is drawn a figure. 
Hmm, sorry. Okay, so here's my parallelogram, and I'm going to mark that the sides are parallel, so I know it's a parallelogram. It says the measure of one interior angle is 0.25 times the measure of another angle. Okay, I don't know either angle, so I'm going to call one angle x. The other one, then, is going to be 0.25x. I know it has to be the adjacent one because the opposite angles are congruent, so this angle would also be x. Now I need to think, what do I know about consecutive angles, the ones next to each other? Well, I know that they're supplementary. So then I would do x add 0.25x equals 180. This gives me 1.25x equals 180. Dividing by 1.25, I get x equals 144. The question then says find the measure of each angle. Well, one angle is going to be 144 degrees because it's x. The other one is 0.25x. So it's 0.25 times 144, which is going to be 36 degrees. Okay. Example 5 is your next one. It says in the diagram QRST and STUV are parallelograms. Find the values of X and Y. Explain your reasoning. I'm going to help you find X, and you're going to find Y. I know that in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. That's helpful to me because x is a side. Therefore, qr is going to be congruent to ts. So if qr is 20, then ts is also 20. Looking at the right parallelogram, I'm going to notice that ts is congruent to uv because they're opposite sides again. Therefore, x is going to be 20. So x is 20. My reasoning is that opposite sides in a parallelogram Are congruent. I would like you to try your best to figure out why. As a suggestion, remember that if opposite sides are parallel, like they are here, you can look for the Z. So there's a whole bunch of Z's here. So keep looking for Z's and filling in information. Good luck. Um, before we finish, I would like you to flip to the next page, please. We do have a few more examples. Um, you can watch these if you think that they would be beneficial. If you think that you understand the concept and you don't need any more help, then you are done. But please make sure that example 5 is finished when you come to class and that you have a value for y. So number 6 says calculate the measures of the missing, missing angles in the parallelogram below. Well, I know that opposite angles are congruent, so if A is 64 degrees, then C is also going to be 64 degrees. And then I know that consecutive angles are supplementary. They add to be 180. So angle A add angle D is going to be 180. So I get 64 add angle D equals 180. This gives me angle D is 116. Opposite sides are congruent, so angle B is also 116. Looking at example 7, calculate the values of the variables. Again, I know opposite sides are congruent, so these sides are going to be congruent. I have 25 equals 8g minus 3. If I add 3, I get 28 equals 8g. So g is going to be 28 divided by 8. Both of those are divisible by 4, so I get 7 over 2. I also have two consecutive angles. They're not opposite of each other, so they're not going to be congruent. Instead, they are going to be supplementary. So I have 72 add f plus 30 equals 180. Combining like terms, 72 and 30 gives me 102 plus f equals 180. If I subtract 102, I get f equals 78. And then we have one last example. Oh, I guess two last examples. Example 8 says, in parale parallelogram EFGH, 
The measure of angle G is 25 degrees less than the measure of angle H. Sketch parallelogram EFGH and find the measure of each interior angle. So let's start by sketching. Okay, so it says parallelogram EFGH. We haven't talked about this a lot, but we have to go in order. Doesn't matter where the E starts, but you have to go in order. So I'm going to start here for E. So E, F, G, H. So go clockwise in order. Then says the measure of angle G is 25 degrees less than the measure of angle H. Okay, so I'm going to call H X. It says G is 25 degrees less than H. So G is going to be X subtract 25. Now, these are consecutive angles, so they're going to be supplementary. So I have X plus X minus 25 equals 180. Combining like terms, X and X is 2X. So 2X subtract 25 is 180. If I add 25, I get 2X equals 205. Dividing by 2, I get X equals 102.5. So we are told to find the measure of each in interior angle. Well, F and H are going to be congruent, and those are both X. Those are both 102.5. They're congruent because they're opposite angles. And then E and G are congruent. And those are going to be x minus 25. So 102.5 minus 25, which gives 77.5. And that's our answer. Now this last example, number 9, we are going to do in class tomorrow. I would like if you would at least take a shot at it right now. Do what you can, and then we will go over it in class tomorrow. If you have any questions, please bring them to class. See you tomorrow.